Duplicate data can be a major problem for you. If you're doing analysis on a data set, having duplicate information in there will lead you to have the wrong results. In addition, if you're sending data to an API, well, your API costs are going to be increased if you're going to constantly send the same data over and over again. Well, NAN allows you to remove duplicates pretty easily with a native node. And in today's video, we're going to be going over seven different examples of how to use this remove duplicates node. We're going to cover things like spreadsheets, post merges. We're going to talk about items going into a node or duplicates across all different types of executions. A ton to cover within this basic node, and I hope that you guys are going to learn a lot in this video. Before we jump into it, though, if you guys need any help with data needs or anything with AI or any end workflows I am taking on customers, you can find my contact information down below. All right, let's jump into this video. First, though, where do you find remove duplicates? Plus the plus icon over here, and then just search for remove duplicates, and it says delete items with matching field values. So it seems pretty basic. Again, there's some pretty cool use cases, so so I'm making a video on it. All right, so first what we're gonna do, and I think this is probably the most common use case, right? And it's comparing fields from a spreadsheet or a database of some sorts, right? So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you could store your data. I'm just gonna show you who Google Sheets, right? Native data tables, also really popular. Airtable, super popular. Superbase, right? If you wanna grab from a database, like a, a Postgres database, right? Lots and lots of different examples, um, but we're just gonna use a spreadsheet in this instance, right? On this spreadsheet, what I have over here is I have states and then cities. So Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, right? And a few cities from each of these with Charlotte being duplicated twice um, from North Carolina, right? So very, very basic example, but this will demonstrate um, one thing to watch out for right away. So what we're gonna do is just get the rows in the sheet, right? And all we do is this in Google Sheets, right? Google Sheet account, get rows, document, grab the spreadsheet we want, sheet one, because that's it. And you can see we have this that populates row number, state, and city, right? And then all I did is attach the remove duplicates node, right? Which again, you just go over here, remove duplicates, right? You click on it. They'll give you three options, right? So remove items repeated within current input. That's the one we're using right now. So use the current input. We'll cover the other ones here in a second. So this is just the items that are going into this specific node, right? And I just clicked all, all fields, which is default, right? So I'm changing nothing. I click execute step and nothing's changed, right? You can see we still have North Carolina here twice with Charlotte twice. And you might be wondering like, what's the issue? Well, depending on how you read in your data, right? Sometimes when you're working with spreadsheets or databases, it's gonna give you these row numbers. And because seven and eight are different on here, right? This is why they weren't removed. So out of the box, if you're working with a, a spreadsheet or database of some sorts, right? This isn't always going to work. You're going to have to actually slightly modify that. That's why I have the second remove duplicates over here. So just to show you on the set of things, right? What I did is I changed this from all fields to all fields except and then ignore this row number, right? And if I do this execute step, now you'll see that the first row is saved, North Carolina Charlotte, and then row eight, right? Which is this one over here has been removed, right? So I can just pin this to show you. And where's this at? Let me rerun this over here. So rerun that. And you can see the difference, right? So North Carolina, Charlotte over here, and then only one. So make sure if you're reading in data and it includes this road number, and if you want to keep this road number, right, make sure just to do fields to exclude and then that road number over here. Okay, so up next, right, what I want to show you is we can actually specify a specific field that we want to remove duplicates on, right? So again, we're just gonna read in the same spreadsheet. Nothing has changed, right? So I'll read in, so you can see one through eight, or two through eight, sorry, uh, state and city. But let's say I wanna go over here and I only wanna get unique states, right? So what I did is I just dragged and dropped state over here, right, pretty basic, and then what I did is I clicked remove other fields. So now what you see is I just have the unique states, right? Florida, Georgia, and then also North Carolina, right? And that's just an option. So just to show you where to grab that, you can go over here, add field. You can say remove other fields, right? Click this on and it just gives you these unique states, right? Again, initially we had all these data points and now we just have Florida, Georgia, and then also North Carolina because we looked at a specific column, right? We could do the same thing with city, right? And go over here. We want to look at city, 
right? And we're going to get all these unique cities, right? The Charlotte's going to be removed over there for the duplicate. And then all the other columns are removed, right? This example was state, just to show you, uh, we can do it on a specific column if we want and get those unique values. So you know how that works. Okay. So another really common way that this happens is something in a post merge. So like, let's imagine we're using a merge and probably the most common use case where this happens is append. So we're going to use an append on this side of things, which by the way, um, if you're not familiar with how a merge works, there's a 30 minute video on the channel where I talked all about the different types of merges that are available here in an NEN. and highly recommend you watch it. Um, this video is going to be actually after it in the playlist, but highly recommend you learn this because it's, it's really important if you're working with data, right. To know how to merge data together. But regardless, what we're going to do is we have, um, two JSONs that we have over here, right? So the first one, what we have is a, a fruit, we have apple, banana, apple, and then we have vegetable carrot, right? And then we have another, uh, down over here, which this is repeated the vegetable carrot. Uh, we have fruit, banana, and then grain, uh, being rice, right? So three, and then we have what, uh, one, two, three, four over here, just to show you what happens when I execute step over here, right? We have this ID we have category and then item, right? Same thing over here, right? We have ID category and item. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge these together again, very similar to like what we had above. Um, with those state and cities, right? So you can see now we have this output over here. We have the ID, which is saved. And then we have the category and item. Again, this is together, right? Vegetable, carrot, which is kind of like our North Carolina, uh, Charlotte example. And then what we're going to do is just remove these duplicates. So, um, what we want to do is exclude a field, which is going to be excluding the ID. And then you can see over here, we only have four items because a few things were repeated. So we have fruit, apple, fruit, banana, vegetable, carrot, and then grain, rice. And we did that. Now, again, very similar to our first example, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, two really, really common cases where this happens. First is going to be like reading in some sort of data table, right? Whether it's a database or a spreadsheet of some sorts or post merge, right? These are the two times that you'll typically use remove duplicates. Obviously there's other cases out there, but these are the two most common ones. So after these, like in your own workflows, think about it like, Hey, do I need, do I need to double check? Right. Um, maybe I want to remove duplicates right after we add this in or after we did this. Right. So think about that in some aspect of like when you want to specifically remove duplicate items. Okay. So next, this is pretty cool and I'll just remove this over here. So what NAN also has on here is remove duplicates from previous runs, right? So there's a few different options on this. So why I think this is pretty cool is like, imagine you have some sort of scraper on like Google maps or something like that, right? You scrape businesses and let's say, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? So like run one, you scrape 10 businesses, right? Scrape 10 businesses in a city, right? And then like, let's say run two, you scrape 10 businesses in a suburb, right? Now, sometimes when you're using Google maps, right? The business might show up for both. So like, ideally there's like, I don't know, 15 unique businesses in two different runs, right? So this is where this becomes really important. Like the above, what this works on is a single run, right? So this worked on a single run and we did that because remove items replaced within current input. So current input is specific run and I'll make this difference over here. So current input is specific run, current input equals specific run. Right. And when we go over here and choose remove items process in previous executions, previous executions equals all runs. Well, not technically all runs. We'll see this here in a second, but just know that difference. Right. So, because I think this is where it kind of trips up people. So current input equals a specific run. So like if I execute workflow, it's that run, any of the duplicates. Right. Previous execution is all runs up to a specific part. Right. And again, like imagine run one, you scrape 10 businesses in city run two, you scrape 10 businesses in a suburb. So there's 15 unique businesses across the two runs. All right. So let's take a look at this example. Right. So what I'm doing first is I have edit fields and I just set an array of Ryan and Matt at gmail.com. So we have both of those over here. 
Then what we're doing is doing a split out. So again, we have these two items. And then I'm going over here, and the first time I run this, remove items, process and previous executions, value is new, right? Drag and drop, value to dedupe on. So the first time I run this, right, you're gonna see both of these are kept. So we have ryan at gmail.com and then matt at gmail.com. So this works properly. Okay, awesome. So now let's try running this again. So let's go and execute workflow. And then if I go over here, right, these were discarded because the first time I went through this node, right, we kept them. The second time we disregarded. Now let's go over here and let's just add in another email. So let's say I put my last name and Matt's last name. So Nolan at gmail.com. And then we'll do pain at gmail.com like that. Okay. So now you'll see we have four across the board, right? We're going to split these out again. And then we'll go over here to remove duplicates. And then you can see we keep two, which are the new ones, null and pain, and then disregard the others. And this is what I was talking about with scraping, right? Because when you scrape data, sometimes you're going to get the same data again, right? So, you know, it's not always going to be in one execution. Sometimes it's going to be multiple times. Like, let's imagine you have a form, as I mentioned, like over here, right? We're looking for locations. You put in one city, you have, you know, 50 or so businesses. The second time you do it, another suburb, another 50 businesses, but you're going to have some uh, repetitions, right? And, you know, those repetitions aren't always going to come specifically into this remove duplicates node. They might be in just different executions, which is why you would want to use this, right? And then going to uh, example number five, clear duplication history, right? So, you know, this might be annoying for someone. You go through over here, right? And you're like, man, like this is being capped. This is being disregarded. How, how do I change this? Like, I, I want to rerun this again and keep all this data. Well, you change this up in the specific node into over here, clear duplication history, right? So it says wipe the store of previous items. So if I run this, it says mode clean database. We're going to execute the step and you can see it has this output of four items, right? So now this is cleared. Let me go back over here and say remove items and previous executions. You're going to have to go back and change these settings. We'll keep items where value is new. And then let's run this again. And then you can see over here, right? It kept all four items. If we run it one more time, right? You'll see now that these are all disregarded on this side of things. Other thing to mention is you do have um, your scope that you can change on here, right? So it says, if set to workflow, key values will be shared across all nodes in the workflow. If set to node, key values will be specific to this node itself. So I showed you the node side of things, right? You can also use the workflow on it, right? Deduplication info will be shared by all the nodes in workflow. Personally, I find node to be the more helpful of these two. So I didn't show you the workflow on that side of things. One thing I do think is helpful though, is this history size. So this is the max number of past items to store for deduplication. This really matters, um, you know, how many times that you run this on, in, in general, right? Like if this is a workflow that you think needs to have a very, very large size that are stored, right? Increase this up. Otherwise, probably just keep um, what is default on the side of things, right? For this example, I only had four emails, so like it didn't really matter, but it, it really just depends on your workflow, specifically how you want to do it, right? And you also have other options over here. So it says how to select input items to remove by comparing them with key values previously processed. So I just put key items where value is new, right? But you can also have two other options. Value is higher than any previous value. So this keeps incremental values, right? And removes all inputs with values up to the stored value. And then you also have this over here, value is a date later than previous, right? So this works with date values. And I'll, let me show you those now. Um, I didn't think about doing those, but I think we should throw those examples. So again, this was the example number five, the clearing duplication on this side of things. Obviously, I, I had to put this here just in case, but let me show you really quick. I'm gonna pause the video, I'll make these two examples and we'll be back with six and seven with those two, because I, I do think they're kind of important. I glossed over them thinking, you know, it'd be super easy to do, but you know what? Let me show you a visual example really quick. We'll be right back. All right, let's jump into these two examples real quick. The first one is value is higher, which is this one over here. Value is higher than any previous value. We're gonna look at the node value again. So I just did an edit fields. I set this number example of 50. We jump in over here, right? Um, and I should say value to dedupe on is this one over here. And see, we keep the value 50, right? So now if I go over here and I put something like 60, right? We'll execute this step. 
So 60 is higher than 50, so it should keep the 60 value. And you can see we keep 60. Now let's say I change this over here to 13, right? Execute step, we have 13. We go over here, I do 13 now, and you can see it's disregarded because 13 is under 60, right? 60 is has been our highest, so this does not exceed that. So that is gonna be the number example, right? And I do wish like there was the opposite. So this value is higher than any previous example. There's no option, right? If I go to options, we just have the scope. There's no option just to do the opposite where the number is lower. Um, it's a shame. I think this is something they should throw in. I mean, it, I don't think it'd be a huge change, but I think it'd be kind of a nice addition. The other one is going to be the date, right? So it just keeps the newer date. So again, with manual mapping, I'm just going to create a string 313.23. No idea why I chose that date, but I just did. I'm gonna convert this to a date and time. So formatted date, I populate this date example format, right? So formatted date, so we see 313.23. First time I run it over here, right? We keep that. Let's say I change this over here to 317.23. So execute this step, right? Execute this step, and then we should keep this as well. So execute this step, and you can see we keep this. Now let's say I, I drop this down and put like 2020, right? Uh, and we'll say like, I don't know, 311, 2020. So go over here, 311, 2020, date and time, execute the step, and then go over here to remove duplicates, right? And that's disregarded because it's an older date. And again, no option to um, keep the oldest date. It's always gonna keep the newest one. So guys, that is essentially remove duplicates, right? So first what we took, a look at is the current input examples, right? Very common with the spreadsheet. Make sure to watch out for that row number, right? Again, you can specify a specific column if you would want to, as I showed you with the states, right? I'm gonna move out other columns as needed. Again, this is very also common with the post merge, especially when you're using append. Um, so watch out on that or something like left join. You can also do this with previous runs. So I showed you on this example for specific items, right? You can also clear that deduplication history. And then in addition, you have the option if a value is higher to keep it, it removes the older, the other stuff that's smaller each time. And the same thing with the date, right? It keeps the date is newer, but then the others are removed. So guys, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learn how remove duplicates works now. If you found value, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have a playlist, well over 35 NEN videos. So make sure to check that out. It's on the screen right now and see you in another video.